Rivals of Ixalan's come out early online, and with it comes a couple good vampires. And so the question is, is vampires now a thing in modern? So the first new vampire we got is Legion Lieutenant. For two mana, it's a 2-2 that gives all the other vampires plus one plus one. So pretty good. I mean, not like Master of the Pearl Trident good, but like it's still pretty good. The second new addition we got is Sky Maestro Aspirant. It's a 2-1 for one. And if you happen to have 10 or more permanents, it gains flying. So it's all right. In modern, it is kind of hard to hit 10 permanents, but it does happen. The good thing is that once it happens once, the ability is active permanently. So it's like the other card. It's like kind of meh. It's, it's pretty good. And the third new addition is Paladin of Atonement. It says at the beginning of each upkeep, if you lost life last turn, put a 1 1 counter on it. And when it dies, you gain life equal to its toughness. So the downside of this card is that it doesn't really work instantly and that you just kind of have to wait for it to pay off. But it can be pretty good, especially in this deck where we do lose life from quite a few things. So, first of all, the fetch just causes us to lose life, so that triggers it. But also, the last fader causes us to lose life every turn if our opponent has more than 10 life. And also, the Asylum Visitor. So, in this deck, it works particularly well. And if the game goes really long, it is nice to have a card like this in the deck. Now, the thing is, the new cards aren't really groundbreaking. And they're not these insane cards that we haven't seen in modern before because like i said legion lieutenant is just not as good as master of the pearl trident but the reason why we're making this video and the reason why it's still relevant is that they're vampires and what makes vampires relevant is this card here calastria highborn which says whenever calastria highborn or another vampire you control dies you may play one black mana and if you do target player loses two life and you gain two life that's pretty good so say you have five creatures out your opponent board wipes you those five creatures die but if you have five black mana available you drain your opponent for 10 and you gain 10 which is pretty good especially considering a lot of these tribal decks fall short against board wipe like elves merfolk they're all susceptible to things like supreme verdict so in some ways you kind of want them to board wipe you because of this card it's a very very powerful card to have in a deck like this so if you compare this deck to merfolk merfolk has a lot of heavy hitters and this deck doesn't really have those heavy hitters but with this card here the deck can be quite powerful in addition we have quite a bit of synergy here we have three air to falcon wraths which allows us to discard a card at instant speed to turn into a 3-2 flyer and we also have one collective brutality to also discard things and why do we want to discard things because we've got four blood gas and yes blood gas is a vampire who knew so turn two you can play air to falcon wrath discard blood gas and when you play a land again it comes back so a very very good card especially late game and along with highborn works pretty well we also have four asylum visitors which has madness so we can discard it pay the madness and it comes into play and since the curve on our deck is so low with two being the highest converted mana cost in the deck we a lot of times run out of cards to play so having this card here which draws us cards helps the deck out quite a bit and a three one for two isn't that bad either we already talked about the last video but another card to talk about is viscerous here we have two in the deck the reason why we have two you can probably guess why but it's because of highborn so late game if the board is jammed and you can't get through to your opponent having highborn and viscerous here out at the same time is quite powerful and if you throw a blood gas in the mix it's even more powerful because you can keep sacrificing blood gas getting it back with lands and you get the idea and then there's four ether vials but that's pretty typical for a deck with this kind of curve and also one mutable because it counts as a vampire the reason why there's not more is because cards like blood gas which has double black and the highborn which has double black and also because the highborn requires you to pay black mana so one mutable is already pushing it there's also an urborg which turns all of our lands into swamps also your opponent's lands into swamps and that helps for two reasons one because cards like mutable but more importantly so that way we can time our fetches a bit better with blood gas because even our fetches count as swamps so they can be used for black mana and we can save the fetch for when we need to bring back blood gas so works pretty well and overall it's a pretty synergistic deck with some powerful stuff but moving on to sideboard we have some of the usual suspects like nihil spellbomb for graveyard hate fragmentizes take out artifacts enchantments two path to exiles two collective brutalities because it works well against burn also combo decks and it was just really versatile card and there's also one self spirit for board wipe but we also have a couple of unusual cards here first one is gatekeeper of malaker so if you pay its kicker for three mana it's a two two vampire which causes your opponent to sack a creature and that works well against decks like death shadow which have only usually one creature out two creatures out of time or even in effect so it's pretty good the only downside is that you can't vial it in and get the kicker ability so that's why it's not main deck the other issue is that you need three black mana to do it and if you have muted all out it just doesn't work so so that's why it's in the sideboard and not main deck but now on to my favorite cards in the sideboard first up we have three zealous persecutions i think everyone knows what it is but i'll read it anyway it says until end of turn creatures you control get plus one plus one creature your opponent's control get minus one minus one so if you're playing against a creature deck you attack your opponent's block you can use this and since we have a lot of little guys it helps out a lot and it works well against other decks that have little creatures out as well so it's just a cool card to use at instant speed and yeah last up we have Etheros god of passage the reason why it's in the sideboard is because of its last ability which says whenever another creature you own dies return it to your hand unless target opponent pays three so again smashes where your opponent has control it's nice to have this card out where if they keep using removal on your creatures you can use etheros to bring them back or make it so it's unfavorable for opponents to not bring it back to your hand and if you have five black or white mana symbols in your creatures in total it turns into a five four indestructible creature and that's pretty cool and since it only costs three it doesn't really wreck the curve of the deck so overall pretty cool card doesn't really work that well with blood gas but works well with everything else so that's basically the deck and now let's get to the gameplay but first if you haven't subscribed doing so helps out the channel and also lets me know what people are interested in because I see which videos people subscribe to more than others and that's how I figure out what to make next and you can also let me know in the comments what you want to see next as well but enough talk let's get to the gameplay and I hope you enjoy it opening hand we have one land but we do have an ether vial so as long as they don't inquisition us or thought sees us we're fine so we'll keep opponent plays hall of fountain tap and back in our turn we'll go ahead play ether vial and pass back to them self spirit please be Azoria spirits that'd be pretty cool another land will probably the best thing to do play the lacerator fatal push the spirit and pass back to our opponent opponent pass back 
respects us. We will go ahead and use the last raider. Back in our turn, I'm not going to play Lieutenant. I'm just going to swing in. So I'm thinking that they have spell color in hand. So use the vial. We'll hit our opponent for six and path to exile. Okay. And a vapor snag as well. Sure. So opponent takes two. And now that they're tapped out, we'll go last raider and another lieutenant and then pass back to our opponent. Opponent plays guys the same trap. That's fine. And now back in our turn, swinging with everything. And before damage is dealt, vial in another lieutenant. So opponent goes down to six and we pass back. Unless they have a supreme verdict to board wipe us, I think we got this one. Yep. Going to game two. So I'm thinking that he's more of a spirit deck than a blue white control deck so i'm gonna swap out the air to falcon rats because having flying doesn't really work that well against him and instead put in three zealous persecutions and with that let's go to game two opening hand curve seems pretty good so we'll keep no place for our opponent first turn so we'll start things off with the lacerator and pass back to our opponent and no place for our opponent what wonder if he has rattle chains hmm so we'll swing in for two no blocks from our opponent interesting interesting well might as well try the steer because if it gets countered then no one really cares because it's just a 1-1 one, one for now. Okay, late game, he'll be good. But back to our opponent. There was a rattle chain. Might as well fatal push that in response to the trigger just to say F you. F you complete. Back on our opponent's turn, selfless spirit. Pull a blood gas. Okay. And now that our opponent's tapped out, we'll go ahead and use the lieutenant. And then swing in for five. No blocks from our opponent. Pass back to them. And there's a concede. Kind of a letdown in the end. But our deck is pretty fast. So yeah, on to the next one. Opening hand, I'd really like to have an ether vial here. But I mean, do you even do you attempt this? It's pretty risky. But we'll, we'll tempt it and hope we get something good off the top. Inquisition. Opponent takes the lieutenant. Back on our turn. Pull a mute of all. Start things off with the seer and pass back to our opponent. Opponent uses thought seize. Takes the second lieutenant. And we get a blood gas. Cool. So swing in for one. Now the question is we played blood gas. And I should probably just go with the asylum visitor. Depends on how much more discarding our opponent has. So if our opponent makes us discard blood gas, that's good for us. And lingering souls. Cool. Ooh, lieutenant. Nice. So play the lieutenant and swing in with both. Opponent double locks the visitor. Okay. Play the mute of all and then pass back. Opponent uses fatal push. Okay. Sack it. A land uh no opponent also drops a little liana will he make us discard please makes a sack ah it's lame <laughs> you know what we could do all right here's what we're gonna do we're gonna turn mute vault into a creature and sack the mute vault so that way we can kill liana on our turn well pull land anyway swing at liana play the visitor play the godless shrine tap and i hope our opponent makes us discard maybe possibly opponent use collective brutality to kill this thing why not this th okay i guess he's probably gonna bring back lingering souls so sack this and a lieutenant on top yep and lingering souls no smallpox okay Okay. at least we get to discard blood gas so we pull the lieutenant we'll play the lieutenant and pass back to our opponent clearing souls and pull an aspirant well we could swing in but i don't think that's favorable to do that so i'm just going to drop the aspirant and pass back to our opponent and fatal push okay opponent swings in no block back to us still no land i don't really want to swing in because it's not a good trade for us so we'll not attack play the last raider and pass back opponent turns that hoe into a creature swings in we could double block and hope he doesn't have fatal push please no fatal push at some point we got to kill that thing so okay no fatal push yes fatal push no fatal push yeah no fatal push all right we're safe and finally a land and should we attack eh. nah i think we should wait for a highborn or something so no attack and opponent doesn't attack either okay and a land cool well might as well swing with blood gas now opponent jumps play land to get the blood gas back and back to our opponent opponent plays shambling vent and no attacks okay air to falcon wrath well swing with the blood gas and no blocks for our opponent finish up with air to falcon wrath and back to our opponent opponent turns this thing into a creature and swings in this is a really bad block here so i'm not going to do it we could double block but nah it's just not worth it a two for one assuming they don't have fatal push then now nah. back in our turn we get a highborn so play that that's really good pretty good so swinging with everything opponent blocks there and we'll drain our opponent for two they're at nine pass back opponent activate shambling vent swings in it looks like sure no blocks from us back on our turn another land so swinging with everything opponent takes six and do we play the land yeah i'll play in case he makes us discard lingering souls ooh and again but with highborn now he's kind of in a bind here because if he blocks then we could just pay the cost so and a fatal push okay we could actually fatal push our own creature if we need to we might end up doing that well swing in with these two opponent blocks so we're gonna drain our opponent twice and now watch this kinky shit will fetch get black bug gas pay the cost of highborn but to make things extra kinky we'll go ahead use fatal push on the blood gas unless he has path to exile or life gain here yep that's the game cool very grindy but 
kinky at the same time. So on the sideboarding, going into game two, I'm gonna get rid of three air to Falcon Rass, one fatal push to put in three zealous persecutions, which are really good against him because he has those flyer guys and also a throw. So in case the game goes really long, we can use it. But with that, let's go to game two. And with two blood gas in hand, I think that's pretty good against our opponent with all his discarding. So we'll keep on it. Starts off with shambling vents, and we'll start off with sky Mitre aspirant and pass the turn back and a smallpox. Nice. So blood gas, and unfortunately, I have to lose those things, but whatever. Back on our turn, Urborg. So blood gas comes back, last raider, and then pass turn back. Thought sees okay. Probably gonna take the highborn, especially after last game. Yep, back on our turn, swinging for four. Opponent takes four, and might as well play both the seers. And things are looking pretty good. Back to our opponent, no place for our opponent. Back to us, hmm, might as well swing in and just pass back to our opponent. I'm not sure how they get out of this one because, like, our board's pretty good right now with the blood gas, especially. Beta pushes that. Well, in response, we'll sack and scry. Last raider, yeah, we can keep that on top. Come on, make a discard. Ah, uh, no discard from our opponent. Shoot, okay. Well, since it has haste, we'll drop the other blood gas and swing in. No blocks from our opponent. They go to one. Might as well drop the last raider. Do we drop the last raider? Kind of overkill if we do. May have put a damnation. Well, that doesn't really matter. I mean, do we play it? Do we not play it? I'm actually not going to play it because I, I don't see how he's going to stop us at this point. And in case there's some kind of board wipe, I mean, that's like unexpected. It's kind of nice to have in hand. Will this be board wipe? Nope, just to concede. Okay, well, not the most competitive match, but it's pretty cool. It's always cool to see Blood Gas in action winning games. So on to the next one. Opening hand curve is a bit rough, but we do have some good cards, so we'll keep. And what? Okay, so I guess it's like Ghetto Mill. I wonder if it's Heartless Summoning Mer Retriever combo. Hmm. That'd be cool. We'll play Aether Vial this turn, pass back. Another Alter the Brood. And might as well, ooh, do we want to go with Highborn or Lieutenant? I guess Lieutenant's better. We'll play Lieutenant and then Vial in this hoe on our opponent's turn. So pass back. It is Murder Retriever combo. Cool. I'm actually pretty happy to see that. It's a really cool combo. I've had my eye on that combo for a really long time, but I haven't been able to come up with a deck that makes it like extra spicy or spicier than what we've seen before. So we'll go ahead, use Fatal Push on this guy. Not that it really does anything other than block. Then drop Lieutenant and swing in for seven. And, and then back to our opponent. No push from them back to us oh forgot the vile listen shoot uh let's pretend like that didn't happen and i guess we'll swing in and then opponent goes down to three we would have had lethal had i remembered to play that last turn but i think we'll still get it either way and there's the game okay so my misplay didn't cost us the game they must not have gotten the cards they needed in hand I mean, they only had colorless mana here so i imagine they're like mono black or something and didn't have the lands for it so i don't know what happens but going into game two we get to four fatal pushes to put in two fragmentized for the heartless summoning and the artifact thing and then also the hill spell bomb and with that let's go to game two opening hand no sideboard cards, but it looks pretty good, so we'll keep it. Profane Memento. And back on our turn, go ahead, use the vial again. Pass back to our opponent. Alter the brood. And then back to us. I'm thinking that maybe he has fatal push, so should we go ahead and use the lieutenant? Probably not. So instead, I'm gonna use the air to Falcon Wrath so we can discard the blood gas and then pass back to our opponent. We'll use the sky marcher on our opponent's turn. Heartless summoning. So they could have the combo right here. And oh man, there's fragmentized. Scrap trawler. Okay. Hmm. So vial on the sky marcher. And then activate air to falcon wrath. Get rid of blood gas. Get back blood gas highborn and then swing in opponent blocks there okay before damage is dealt use the lieutenant and with the aspirant dead do we use the highborn or the lacerator hmm i think we've got to pass on the highborn's ability just so we can play the lacerator so then after damage is dealt lacerator and back to our opponent alter the rude another scrap trawler and opponent's out of cards in hand they have gained a lot of life though but with the way things are going we should be able to close it out so swing in opponent blocks there yeah okay probably shouldn't have attacked with that but we will cause our opponent to lose two life and we'll finish up by playing an aspirant and then back to our opponent once again and and dang you, Henny's expertise. Well, if only we had the mana's capitalized on all this highborn stuff, but we can do it once. So we'll do it once. Back on our turn, land. Okay, so Wild Gas comes back, and he has haste, so we'll swing it for two. Back to our opponent, and an orb. So we're just gonna try and mill us. Okay, back to us. Air to Falcon Wrath. Okay, we can vile that in on our opponent's turn for now. We'll swing it for two. Back to our opponent. Inquisition in response to Inquisition, we will vile in the air to Falcon Wrath. So that fizzles. So back to our turn. And we do have a Blood Gas in Graveyard. Hmm. So that should be lethal. Fetch, get a land, discarding the visitor, playing it with madness. That way it doesn't gain life, and we'll swing in for seven. And that's lethal. So unfortunately, we did not get to see the infinite combo from our opponent. And that's kind of the problem with Heartless Summoning decks. It's like, it's good when you pull at the right time, but sometimes you just don't have the right pieces at the right time, and it's really hit or miss. But A for effort, right? So yeah, on to the next one. Opening hand, we're missing that white mana, but we can still make it work with the Heir to Falcon Wrath and the visitor, so we'll keep. Okay, good. Now we have white mana. So we'll still stick with the Heir to Falcon Wrath thing, so that 
way you can discard the blood gas. So air to Falcon Wrath. Oh, it's gonna be spell snare here. Yep, been seeing a lot of those lately. Okay, pass back. Visions and opponent passes back. So let's see if he wants to spell snare this. Blood gas. Could also have path to exile. Okay, blood gas comes out. And I'll finish up with the last raider. Back to our opponent. And yep, there is a path to exile. Okay. Opponent plays the sacred foundry and tap and passes back. So maybe lightning helix. Hmm, well, we can dump our hand. Actually, I think the safest thing to do here attack with the last raider without the lieutenant. See if he wants to bolt it. Come on, bolt. Nah, fine. Okay, I'll play our hand. So lieutenant, spell snare, sure. Ether vial. And then the visitor. That comes out, pass back. Never mind, there was a helix there. Visions again. Back on our turn. No goody. Another land. Swing for two. Opponent goes to 13, pass back. Opponent plays colonnade tap, passes back. Back. Shoot, more land. Okay, swing in. And then back to our opponent. Oh, it passes back to us uh, another last raider well it's like the worst possible spot to have the last raider out because as long as he's at 11 we'll continue to lose life but we'll try it pass back to our opponent i use a snap caster oh boy he takes out one of those sure and opponent swings in do we trade yeah i think so not or at least now with his life at 14 back to us another land spectacular well back to our opponent opponent passes back to us we'll fetch and oh man well might as well drop it and pass back to our opponent. Opponent pass it back to us. Holy shit. Well, this is hella bad. At least we got the city blessing. Okay, great. Back to our opponent. Lightning Helix. I think our opponent's got this one. Oh, no, wow. That's just like too many lands. Okay, on to game two. Put ourselves out of our misery. Uh. So going to game two, I'm gonna get rid of two Fatal Pushes and two Air to Falcon Rats to put in two Collective Brutalities, one Selfless Spirit, and one of the Gods. So with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand. Yeah, this looks pretty good. No Aether Vial, but yeah, it'll work. Start off with the Sky Marcher and pass back. Opponent starts off with the Visions. Did I put Selfless Spirit in on the sideboard? I probably should have because of the Supreme Verdict. Back in our turn, I'll drop a Lieutenant and swing in for three. Back to our Opponent. Planes and tap passes back to us. And there's another blood gas. Well, they probably have counter, so we'll swing in for five. No blocks from our opponent. Attempt to play a blood gas. Will we see remand? Probably took him out because we're pretty aggro. Yeah, okay, it hits. Back to our opponent. And it turns celestial purge. Okay. And opponent plays land, passes back to us. Hmm. Let's attempt blood gas. It hits. Um, oh, do we go with Legion's Lieutenant? I'm afraid they have Supreme Verdict. Even if they do, though, blood gas will come back. Well, I think we'll go with Legion's Lieutenant. See what happens. It hits. Well, swing in. He's got to have a path to exile, otherwise, that's Legion's lethal and what do they got secure the waste okay so they go down the six and survive the question is do they have supreme verdict this turn even if they don't they could have cryptic command and keep tapping our guys for a couple turns supreme verdict hey what do you know that's what i get for not putting selfless spirit in yeah Ooh, cool so we'll fetch get black blood gas so we'll swing in for two and i'll finish up by playing atrios but it kind of has a nombo with the blood gas but it could come in handy if this game goes longer and might as well play ether vial as well okay back to our opponent and oh no rune halo shoot she's using blood gas and divisions okay oh i did put selfless spirit in what <laughs> all right the no excuses attempt to play selfless spirit please don't have spell snare and it hits pass back to our opponent visions and opponent passes back well might as well swing in with selfless spirit opponent goes down to two okay back to them i think we got this one and opponent uses lightning helix okay so it gets dragged out even more but as long as ethros is out i mean i don't see how it can come back because if anything dies ooh, yeah it's pretty smart so back to uh on an aether vial swing for two opponent goes down to three we might as well play aether vial and back to our opponent and a lightning helix will sack so it doesn't gain the life and opponent passes back to us okay finally we got this okay so that should do it we'll vial it in at the end of our opponent's turn no place on our opponent's turn we'll vial in the highborn and unless they have path to exile i think we got it here so swing for two lightning bolt sure so they'll go to one pass back to our opponent we'll vial this in on their turn opponent passes back vial in the last raider and and we'll just do it. Opponent uses cryptic. Okay, so back to them. So let's still colonnade. Ooh, and an engineer explosive as well. Suppose we don't want to vial this in now. Back on our turn. We'll attempt to swing for two. Imaginary use the engineer explosives. Yep. Then we'll play Mutaval and the Aspirant. Back to our opponent again. Opponent uses Electrolyze. Well then. Make Celestial Colony into creatures, so they must have Bolt for the Muta Vault, right? Why else would they be attacking? So we take four, back to us. Marsh Flats will turn Muta Vault into a creature. Swing for two. Yep, there's the Bolt. Back to our opponent. Colonnade again. So opponent swings for four, no blocks. Well, that's not good. Colonnade coming at us again. Back to us. Wow. Okay, so we lost that one. Hup, hup, hooray. Opening hand, we're on the plate, and we have Ether Vials, so yeah, that's pretty good. The curve 
is a bit meh, but we can make it work. Start off with Ether Vial, pass back. Rift Bolt suspended. Ooh, so this is burn. Nice. And a Blood Guest. So I know what we're doing now. Drop the Falcon Wrath, pass back to our opponent, and then we'll use his ability or her ability to drop Blood Gas in the graveyard and use Ether Vial to drop that in. So looking good. I'm going to use Rift Bolt on us. And will we see Searing Blaze? Nope. Idle one. Hmm. That's actually fine. Yeah, with Ether Vial out, he's in a pretty bad position with Idle on out. Probably hurts him more than hurts us. So we'll discard dropping Blood Gas, Vial and the Aspirant. And in case we hit a land this turn, I'm going to keep Vial on one. Yep. Marsh Last, getting back Blood Gas. And do we swing him with the Aspirant? He's just going to block probably now that our board looks the way it does. So I'm actually going to keep it back and then swing in with the guy with Flying and pass to our opponent. Opponent swings in. We could block, but we're better off just keeping it there. It helps us a lot. So I'm just going to leave it there. And on the end step, Vial and the Aspirant. Aspirant comes out. A little suspicious that our opponent hasn't played anything, but we'll swing him with everything. And it was this Lightning Bolt. Okay. Killing the Flyer. And opponent also bolts the other one. So sure. But opponent still takes four to go six. We play that tapped and pass back to our opponent. And opponent really can't play that much stuff because like they're at six life. Eidolon. Yeah. Fatal push. Do we play it? Oh man. I don't know. Maybe not. Ah, man, this is a tough one. I think it's better to not do anything this turn. Just hold back. I don't know. This feels so shitty though. Yeah. We're better off waiting. Okay. Pass back. Lighting Helix. Yeah. Targeting the Aspirant. And no place for our opponent and no attacks. Okay. And air to Falcon Wrath. We can vile it in on our opponent's turn. So again, nothing from us. Opponent uses Boros Charm. Sure. We're still at 10 though. For a burn game, this is pretty strange. It's like dragging on. It's just, it's just different. I don't know how I feel about it. But anyways, vile in the Falcon Wrath. And they're probably going to kill it. But we're going to swing it with the air. Discarding the land. So opponent pretty much has to bolt it. They can't block it. Are they really going to take it? No, I didn't think so. Lightning Helix. Lucky for them. Opponent's back at six. Okay. And back to them. Nothing for our opponent. Shoot. And a land. Well, play that tab and pass back to them nothing from our opponent <laughs> and yes pretty gangster pretty gangster so pass back to our opponent and ooh, they got rid of their skull crack nice so we go to seven hopefully they don't have any more skull cracks though because that really gets in the way of the highborn no attacks from our opponent vile in the highborn and they still could have skull cracks hmm. but if you keep drawing lands shoot how kinky would this be if we fatal push the blood gas i think that's still safe okay if i lose this because of this then i'm sorry but i think think this is the way to go if we go ahead kill the blood gas that if they have skull crack we're, we're really screwed but i think we still get it either way so that triggers this target him will they skull crack it no so they go down the two get back blood gas swing in with both and opponent concedes it well we were able to out navigate burn a game one so that's pretty cool collective brutalities will help though because it does allow us to gain life if we need to and against burn we always need to we can get rid of two asylum visitors and put in two collective brutalities but other than that i think we're good keeping things as is and with that let's go to game two opening hand and new lands we're gonna mull oh, you've got to be kidding me mull and two highborns yeah we'll keep and a vial so keep that on top and it starts off with swiss sphere and we'll start things off with ether vial pass back to our opponent and opponent drops a boros charm sure so we're at 12 back to us and we pull a collective brutality that's very convenient i think it's worth double discarding on him to do all three modes and unfortunately we'll lose a highborn in the process but we just got to do it oh my well i think that searing blade is going to come back to bite us if we don't get rid of it unfortunately we got to live him with skull crack which could be a problem with highborn later but Searing Blaze it is. And back to our opponent. Lava Spike. And opponent pass back to us. Hmm. This for Seer. Well, could just swing with Mutaval. Yeah. Opponent takes two. Back to them. Eidolon. Sure. And then Vile in the Highborn. I'm actually kind of surprised he didn't take Eidolon out after game one, where it really just killed him more than it killed us. And what to do here? Hmm. Could just Vile in the Falcon Wrath on our opponent's turn. So I think we'll just do that and pass back. Opponent swings in. Really? Hmm. Do you have that Skull Crack in hand, though? Yeah, I suppose we'll Vile in and block. Ah, it's a little iffy. But we'll force the Skull Crack out of him. Block like that. Pay the cost, but we know he's gonna use skull crack on us. Yep, and it still takes two though. Back on our turn, I really want to play the godless shrine, but oh man, I think we gotta keep one open for the highborn in case he tries to bolt it. So play godless shrine trapped, unfortunately, and just swing with highborn, no muta vault, and just uh, yeah, shoot. All right, kind of lame. Back to our opponent, lava spike, and back to us, and the land. So that could do it. Play the land, play viscera seer, mm, and I guess make muta vault into creature as well, and swing in for four. Opponent goes to four, pass back, bolts us. Now, here's where things get a little iffy if we pass back to them he could have a skull crack so if he has like a third land a bolt and a skull crack then that could do us in so we could just sack the visceral seer or even the muta vault now to put him at two and put us up to seven hmm uh, i don't know what's the right play here maybe just sack the visceral seer to himself yeah we'll just do that now i don't i don't like waiting so target our opponent drain and fatal push on top uh no bottom that so we're at four they could just double bolt us here uh, there's one bolt oh man actually 
Oh, he just bolts the highborn. Oh, so he didn't have the double bolt. Oh man, no way. Falcon Wrath. Yeah, we'll swing in. I I think this is it. Because if he couldn't do it then, then that means we got it. And we did get it. All right. So we were able to take out burn 2-0. I mean, the, our deck was pretty fast. And the life gain really helped against burn. So I don't know how I feel about the deck. I mean, it went 4-1. But some of those matches were a bit, you know, they weren't really that competitive. But even if they were more competitive against like aggro decks, I feel like we would have gotten a lot of them. So I don't know. So was the deck good? I'll leave it up to you guys to decide that. I mean, in some ways it was, in other ways it wasn't. I feel like you have to compare it to Merfolk though. And Merfolk is like the tribal deck of modern. And Merfolk just seems a bit more powerful and consistent, I, I think. I mean, that's how it seems. Although it's hard to tell because with Highborn, even though the creatures aren't as powerful as in Merfolk, it's like with Highborn out, it's hard to kind of gauge if Vampire is worth it. Because the thing is, when Merfolk gets jammed or if any of these tribal decks get jammed like elves and they can't have a clear shot to victory and they just have to wait, cards like Highborn could really help decks like that because Highborn makes it so if you somehow get board wiped or somehow if your creatures get like unfavorable trades, you can still make up for it by dealing with the draining stuff. So really hard to say where this deck stands. Also with the discarding thing of Heir to Falcon Wrath and the Collective Brutality worked really well with Blood Gas, but it also works well with the Visitor. So the deck has its upsides. One card you didn't really get to see in action was the Paladin of Atonement. The card seems like it could be good in the long run, but I, it's just one of those cards that if it's not good right away, then I'm just kind of like, meh. It could have worked well against Burn because it does have the life gain thing when it dies, but I don't know. I'm, ha I'm having second thoughts about it. Like when it first came out, I'm like, hell yeah, we're using this card. And then now I'm just kind of like, eh, maybe not. But overall, the deck was pretty fun to play and hopefully you enjoyed watching. And if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe and let me know in the comments what you want to see next. And as always, I hope you have a great day.